Am I the a-hole for refusing to walk my daughter down the aisle? My daughter, twenty-six, female, and I haven't spoken in years. When she was fifteen, we found out she wasn't my biological daughter, and that my wife had cheated on me years ago with a friend. As it turns out, the so-called friend was suddenly interested in playing dad. My wife and I divorced. My daughter learned the truth, and I told her I still loved her no matter what. Of course, she was interested now in getting to know her biological father, and while it hurt, I tried to accept that. She started pulling away from me after that. Even when trying to still do things together as a family, she was no longer interested. The last straw was when she was twenty and living at my house. We were arguing because she dropped from her college courses, hasn't done anything for three months, and mad because I told her she either needed to go to school or work if she wants to stay here for free. She told me I'm not her real dad, so stop pretending like I am that she'll just go stay with her real father. That broke me honestly, but I told her if that's how she really feels, then there's really nothing left to say between us. And she didn't move out to go live with him. I was depressed for a very long time, drank so much. My son, twenty-four male, was my only reason to keep moving forward. For the first couple years, I reached out to my daughter, but she wanted no contact, and I learned to accept that and move on. It helped me find more peace in my life. My son stopped talking to her for a while over this and was angry with her. They still chat sometimes, which doesn't bother me at all. And through him, I learned her biological father died in October 2019. Also, that she's engaged. She then reached out to me. First, that she knows that we haven't talked in a while, but wants to ask me if I'd be willing to walk her down the aisle. After a pretty long message about how much she hurts me in the past with her actions, I told her no. She didn't want me to be her father anymore, so I learned to no longer view her as my daughter. This turned into a fight between us because, according to her, it's not her fault she wanted to know her real dad, and I agree with her it's not. But what was her fault was how she treated me ever since. In my mind, I know if he hadn't passed away, we wouldn't even be speaking right now. It ended with telling her I hope she enjoys her wedding, but I want no part of it or her life. My son has told me she's ranting to my family that I'm ruining her day, and she thought parents are supposed to love their kids unconditionally. My brother seems to think now that I'm being a hoe, and that this is my chance to be in her life again. But I have no interest in that. Still, seems everyone has a strong opinion on it that I'm making it difficult for my daughter to have the wedding she wants when it would mean a lot to her. My son is on my side, but the comments are still wearing me down. And just for the sake of my sanity, am I being a hoe? Now for the top comments. Not today, home. She decided that you're not her father in any capacity. You respected that. Now that the other guy is dead, she doesn't get to change the rules. She doesn't want you. She wants someone to play a part. Maybe your son can be the one to give her away instead, or her mom can walk her down the aisle. Maybe, but my son already said he's not going to the wedding. Not over this. He just doesn't want to. So I don't know what his response would be if she asked him. They're not close, despite talking every now and then. Not today, home. Wow, Opie. I'm so sorry to read through your story. And some people may disagree, but I really don't think you're the a-hole. You attempted contact throughout the years, but it wasn't you that became distant. It was your daughter. She wanted to get to know her by dad. Nothing wrong with that. But at the expense of becoming distant and eventually having no contact with you, her dad who had been there for her since she was born. Now the by dad isn't there to walk her down the aisle. Opie, if she wanted you at her wedding, you would have gotten an invitation and not become a stand-in for deceased by dad. Why can't your brother walk her down the aisle? Personally, I think she just wants her wedding to look good, irrespective of how you feel. Not today, all at all. He said he's not going to the wedding regardless, but I'm not sure if she would ask him. Hi, Opie. I'm adopted. It is entirely possible to have a relationship with multiple sets of parents. When I found my boy dad, my adoptive dad invited him to a Father's Day barbecue. My boy dad asked if he would be stepping on his toes. My adoptive dad said more people loving my daughter is a good thing. Not today, home. She's just mad that this will ruin her day. Has no concerns over your thoughts and feelings. Next story. Am I the a-hole for telling my dad I'm glad he's stealing my money gave his marriage bad luck? My mom died when I was ten, and she left me money in trust with my grandparents in charge. But my dad got access to it due to him being my dad and knowing about it, and paid for his wedding with it a few months later. I hated him for it. Then afterward, he and his wife had a worse luck. She lost her job and had to take huge downgrade, and then they couldn't have kids. 
Then my dad's longest friend told him he was done with him, after they'd had a fight a couple of months before that. My dad got also passed over every promotion since. I know it's not my mom, but I like to think my mom gave them the bad luck when they used her money to pay for their wedding. Though my grandparents secretly put the money to a different account and considered it my mom's money for me still. So I didn't fully miss out. But my dad didn't care if I did. I'm now 20 and kinda estranged from my dad. I saw him at my pops, his dad's, house a couple of weeks ago. And he was ranting to me about not being there after the crap they have gone through. I told him I was glad stealing brought him bad luck. And to leave me alone. Am I the a-hole? Not the a-hole. He reaped what he sowed. Can't blame anyone except for his a-hole self. I think this may be one for the history books as positive proof of witchcraft. Not mad about it at all. Leaving the new wife aside, I'm thinking that the reason your dad's been passed over for every promotion and the fact he used money meant for you for himself might be one and the same. I'm sure if he's that entitled and selfish, it's probably coming across in his work too. Not stay home. Exactly. People who would steal from their children by literally breaking the law will not all of a sudden be moral and decent human beings in every other aspect of their lives. And same thing goes for the new wife. Yep. My Yeho dad stole my inheritance. Our estrangements began with a lawsuit. Not day home. But several people failed you here. A trust set up by others is meant to prevent anyone who isn't a trustee, parents included, from accessing it. Being your dad wouldn't have given him free access. He'd have needed special permission to access it, usually done through court, and he would have had to prove why he needed it and how it was being used for you. Besides that, only your grandparents would have been able to access it to give him permission since they were trustees. We believe it was the bank that ultimately failed me. The bank account my dad went in with my papers and gained access that way. My grandparents were furious. Next story is titled, Am I the a-hole for charging my sister a full price for the costume baskets plus robes, forcing her to possibly have to return her dream wedding dress? Basically. A couple months ago, my female 19 sister, 30, was telling my mom she had a really tight budget for a wedding and couldn't afford a big wedding she had dreamt of. So I offered to help her find cheaper alternatives to the decorations she wanted. She asked if I could make the bridesmaids costume baskets and robes with their names on it for less than half of what I charge, because she couldn't find someone who could make it for a cheap enough price. So I agreed. Eventually, she managed to save a lot and was able to get the dress she originally wanted. I figured everything else was fine until last week. My sister decided she did not want kids at her wedding because she wanted the adults to enjoy themselves and drink. I still thought nothing of the sudden change, until she told me I was no longer invited to her wedding. When I asked her why, she said because I was to be considered a kid since I can't drink. She said I was still invited to the wedding rehearsal, but that's it. I told her since I wasn't invited to the wedding, to find someone else to do the costume robes plus gift baskets, or pay me full price for it. This meant she would have to return her dress because everything else she had for the wedding was already the cheapest she could find. Both my mom and dad say I'm being petty and that I should still do it because she's my sister. Her fiancé has also called me self-centered and childish and my brother agreed with him. Am I the a-hole here? Edit. Some people suggested she and invited me for a different reason, but we haven't had any argument in a while. And the last big argument was last year, so I don't see what I could have done to make her uninvite me. But thank you guys for the comments. Also, I live in America, so I legally can't drink for another two years. But I didn't have a problem with not drinking anyways. Also adding, I was invited. I didn't assume I could go. She was there when I bought my dress. Now for the comments. Not today, home. You're 19 and immediate family, not a toddler for distant relative. Is she also going to uninvite anyone who's teetotal or simply doesn't drink? The adults can still enjoy themselves. You're in no way preventing that. Tell her that if you're considered a kid, fulfilling her request would be child labor, and you wouldn't want to encourage her to do something so unethical as to capitalize on that. I loved a child labor comment. That's the reason the OP should give to her sister for not doing baskets and robes. Not stay home. I'm shocked that she would uninvite you and call you a child after using you for cheap labor. That is ridiculous. She can pay you full price or reinvite you. She doesn't have to have a wedding at all. If she can't afford some things, that's her problem. Not stay home. Yep, it would be sucky behavior even if she was some random friend or a distant relative. But own sister? Yeah, no. 
Next story. Am I the a-hole for publicly calling out my sister and her new husband for lying about their wedding being child-free? My stepdaughter, 15, Jane, has a burn scar around her neck and covers one side of her face. The reason was an accident that took place four years ago. And yes, she's already gotten tons of insensitive comments. But to me and her dad, she's still the most beautiful soul. My family's been supportive and loving towards Jane. My sister and her now husband got married days ago. They told me and my husband they decided the wedding would be child-free, meaning Jane couldn't come. They asked if that'd be okay, and we said yeah, absolutely. Respect the bride and groom's rules. I've immediately arranged for Jane to stay with a friend that she calls Auntie, though Jane wanted to attend the wedding. But I explained this was a rule for everyone, and we should respect that. My husband and I got to the venue, and first thing we noticed was kids. Kids of all ages all around the venue. My husband literally stopped walking. He paused for a few seconds, looked at me then let go of my hand and said he was out of there. He walked out. But I stood still when my mom saw me and signaled me to come join the family. But I didn't go. He asked one of the guests who had his kid with him and he said this event allowed kids. I was seeing red at this point because I was fooled into leaving Jane at home and coming with my husband only. I ignored mom and went straight to where my sister and her husband were standing. Then I blew up at them asking why they lied about this being a child-free wedding when it wasn't. He asked them in front of everyone why they decided to basically lie to me and my husband and get us to exclude our daughter. Why? Is Jane somehow different from the other kids who showed up? My sister tried to calm me down, but I bluntly asked if it was because her step-niece has a burn scar slash visible injury that she and her husband were too ashamed of. I literally heard guests saying, oh. Mom tried to get me to step off the stage. But I proceeded to call my sister and her husband awful, insensitive people with no respect for me or their knees. My sister started crying saying she would never and that I misunderstood, and brother-in-law begged me to go sit. But I refused and said I wasn't interested in celebrating slash supporting their marriage after this. I walked out and was followed by my mom and aunt slashing out saying I went out of line and was disrespectful for the bride who is my sister for God's sake and ruined her wedding by saying that in front of everyone. Mom said it was brother-in-law's idea, and I have a right to be mad, but I should have confronted her later, not in front of guests and ruining the event. They said eventually this was their day, and they get to decide. But still, they said I should have spoken to her privately or left instead of making a scene. Not today, home. They deserved every bit of embarrassment. Yep, just showed all their friends and family the true versions of themselves. Not today, home. What shocked me about this was that your mom clearly knew this lie was happening and didn't tell you. What did she expect? That you would be okay with it? Your daughter clearly has great parents who love her and a sucky extended family. People turn into absolute monsters over making sure their wedding looks perfect. I'll never understand why these kinds of people are so quick to ruin their relationships over trying to present a certain image to others. Not today, home. I'm glad they got called out in front of everyone for being horrible people. Your poor daughter is probably sensitive about the scar as it is. This would make her feel so much worse. I hate to think about how she'd feel if she finds out about this. Now for the last story. Am I the a-hole for not wanting to pass down my engagement ring to my future daughter-in-law? My son Sam, 26, and his longtime girlfriend, now fiancé Emily, 26, finally decided to get married. They had announced their engagement privately to my husband and me, and after the initial excitement, they said they had something important to talk to me about. Sam wanted my engagement ring to give to Emily. Sam said this would be a great way to keep him from starting his marriage debt, from having to buy a new expensive diamond ring. Emily also added that she has liked the look of my ring a lot, and would love for me to pass it down to her. I love my engagement ring. I've worn it every day since my husband proposed to me with it, and to be honest, I still have plenty of years to live that I want to keep wearing it until I am old and gray. Also, my ring is not a family heirloom. My husband chose and bought this ring for me many years ago. So I told them that I appreciated them wanting my ring, but no, I wanted to keep it. I listed out the reasons above, and how I don't want to part with my ring yet for the rest of my still long life. However, when I am old, I would be more than happy to give it to their future children. Well, Sam and Emily weren't happy with my answer, and Sam actually called me selfish and materialistic. He said that diamonds are a scam, and asked how I could let him go into debt to buy a new ring. Emily was disappointed, 
and said that she had hoped that my room could become a family heirloom and it would be a token of accepting her into our family. I've always liked Emily and we got along great. They also said that I could keep my wedding band, so it wasn't like they were leaving me without any rings to wear. Am I the a-hole? Not the a-hole, but I almost can't even believe this. They're calling you materialistic? They can get married without any diamond ring at all. It's hardly a requirement. Your son is additionally an a-hole for asking you this with Emily right there in front of you. It's like a kid who asks his mother, Can Jimmy spend the night? With a friend there, so mom can't say no. Bad enough that Emily was there too. But Emily actually piping up to express her own disappointment? This is gobsmacking. What's next? They ask to be gifted Opie's house so they don't start their marriage in debt? While we're at it, go ahead and throw in all your savings. You two are old and your life is basically over anyway. If I was Opie, I'd be seriously questioning where me and my husband went wrong in raising the self-absorbed a-hole and how he could possibly have turned out this way. Not the a-hole. Time for them to grow up. That crap floored me too. So not the way to start off your relationship with your mother-in-law. Also, if they're so concerned about materialism and cost of a diamond, then they could always get a cheaper stone. Hell, pawn shops are full of other people's heirlooms and diamond rings for a bargain. If Opie's son is insistent on an actual diamond while still being a cheap a-hole. Edit. Thanks to everyone who commented. I liked reading about your own engagement rings and diamond alternatives. My husband did defend me and had told our son to leave and walk it off when he started arguing with me. He said he's on my side and would have respected my decision with the ring, but he admitted that he was happy that I still love my ring so much after all these years.